Hello, everybody. It is Rocco, your boy, coming at you once again with another Age of Sigmar video. And this probably. Hey, we keep hitting those AOS general classes more than a 101. I feel like this isn't really master class material, but, you know, I might be wrong. We'll see what our editor goes to put this under. Uh, and what we'll be talking about today is hard countering people, because you hear on the internet all the time, oh my god, I only lost that game because he took the right, you know, that's the glasses. He got the right build to go and hard counter me. I didn't stand a chance. I couldn't play the game. What's going on here? Now, with a game like Pokemon, right? Which is where this idea kind of came from. Countering the different gyms and type advantages and the rock, paper, scissors of it all is a thing in games, video games, board games, rock, paper, scissors itself literally being the game, countering things has always been a valid tactic in tournament play, in competitive play, in just playing games. Now, how do you do it in a game as complex as Age of Sigmar? And th this is going to be a bit more of a rant than a formal, here's all my slideshows, here's my stuff, this is just me talking to you, talking to me, so I can help me, help you, help me, help you. In that, also, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm going to probably be ranting deliriously for a bit. But, I feel like this is more of a talk with you than a teach-at-you moment, okay? So, in order to even think about countering someone, you need to know, you know, what counts as rock, what counts as paper, what counts as scissors, right? Like, you know, what does water... Beat fire and put it out, or does fire turn water into a fine mist? Where where do we go? How do we do this? So we need to get some terms out, out of the way here. Because there are several ways you can counter an army. You can counter people's play styles. You can counter their specific army builds. You can counter the straight up one army just always will beat another army. That... Those are possibilities, and given how Warhammer was never meant to be a perfectly balanced game, even though in today's world, all, so many armies are within that 45% to 55% bracket posted in Games Workshop's Warhammer community, articles, YouTubers bigger than me that are always reporting on the state of the tournament scene. There's enough stuff out there. I won't go out and just quote stats which army beats what we're going broad strokes here or else this video will be four hours long and you know you only have 20 minutes if you're listening to me i'm probably still gonna go to 25 the common thing is when it's real it's real hard countering can happen but it it comes down to Sometimes game mechanics and if armies have certain tools in their toolbox, right? Because Warhammer is a game of answers. You need to find the questions that are being asked. Like, how do I beat this army that's in the meta, that's kicking everybody's butt? How do I counter it? How do I build towards this specific thing? Because if you show up to a tournament that's got anywhere from, you know, four to 300 players, you're not guaranteed to run into the army you built your army to beat specifically, unless you already know what's coming. Like, if you're in a small enough playgroup, it's like, yeah, you know, Jimmy down the street, every Saturday we go and meet up for pizza, and I'm like, ooh, he's got this army of, it's a real horde army, and I need a way to beat a horde. You know, it's Gloomspite Gits. And I just, I don't know, my army doesn't have the tools for it. What do I do to build to beat a horde army? Well, in order to beat a horde army, you generally need horde clearing abilities or spells to take it out. Because what will happen is that a horde army builds to have massive bodies that die to a stiff breeze. But they can either regenerate the bodies... Or they just bring so many they don't care. It's a war of attrition, and they don't care that they don't have a lot of good quality attacks. 
because they have a good quantity of attacks. It's not like they've got like you know, uh, Stormcast with a great hammer doing three damage to swing at Neg Two Rend, and it's like three attacks. They found a way to get a fourth in. No, it's a Grot with a stick. That's probably got one stab. But when fifty Grots with sticks get together and stab you with the pointy end, some of them will get through. Now, you know how. Once you've identified what you're trying to counter, again, how do you do it? Let's take the Grot example here. Again, we're thinking of about popular armies in the meta. Your, your buddy down the street keeps beating you, and you want to finally stick it to him one time. What, what do you do, and how do you do it? And if it's Grot, in Age of Sigmar, there are a lot of abilities through either breath weapons, on mounts. Like, I'm thinking like the, the Storm... No, not the Storm... The, the Cities of Sigmar Black Dragon as a breath ability, or there's spells that do this. Uh, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord on Mana Core is one of my favorites. But you can look through your army and see, there's maybe there's a once per game ability to do this. It generally falls along the lines of roll dice equal to however many models are in the unit in range of your ability or spell or attack, whatever. And on a 5-up or a 6-up, because you roll that many dice, like let's say there's 50 goblins in the unit, you roll 50 dice for every 6-up you do a mortal wound. That in Age of Sigmar is classified as a horde clearing or horde killing ability. And whether that's a magic spell, so you yourself have to bring a couple versions of that. Some armies have like ones on the war scroll of a hero and then another one is in the spell lore. Maybe it's something like the Sylvaneth Warsong Revenant that has the mortal wound bomb spell. You know, as an example, it's roll however many dice equal to the casting roll that you made for the spell. For every five up, do a mortal wound. And repeat this to each unit in range of the spell. This isn't a true horde clearing ability, but what ends up happening is you know, if you get pluses to cast, and you can get this off reliably at, like, a 10 or higher, you get 10 dice to each unit, and if you get three or four units in range a couple times, eventually the casualties will start piling up. And, you know, part of the things with dealing with a horde army are... Individually, the grot is weak. There needs to be some kind of a support hero to buff them up or some kind of a cool ability to bring them back either through some kind of a cool rally or in the case of the actual Gloomspite Gits, if we're getting specific, their Loon Shrine. Which means you probably need to bring some kind of a monster in to be able to do the monster section to destroy a faction terrain piece. Again, it's... If it's not in your army, you're like, oh no, this is going to be hard for me to build around. If you're bringing Iron Jaws and you like bringing two Maw Crushes, look at you. You found a way to counter their ability to bring models back. You just have to withstand the storm first to get there. You know, and Horde armies generally do good into elite armies because they'll over overwhelm them and outnumber them on objectives. It's not a killing game. If you're playing a horde army, most of the time they're good because you're scoring points. And you don't mind taking off 80, 90 minis a combat phase because you're going to put a bunch back and you've got movement trays. Yeah, elite armies are strong because they're good damage dealers. They could be mobile. They could be aggressive. They could be maybe magic heavy and they're good at killing support pieces. And the way to get around elite armies is either don't play the fighting game or you just mortal wound them to death. Because they've got like a 3-up or a 2-up armor save. I really hope that uh, my microphone's not picking up my neighbor's uh, music right now because we'll get a copy strike thing for whatever movie they're watching. But I'm keeping recording because this is when I can record. But to, to beat like an elite army of like Stormcast, generally you mortal wound them to death. Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Even with their ward save, you make it so that they can't ignore your rend and have the re-rollable armor saves. You go straight to mortal wounds. That generally means magic or some kind of an ability to do that. Whether it's impact hits like Ogre Maw Tribes. 
with their charging ability. Maybe it's uh, the Lumineth Realm Lord shooting from the Sentinels. Maybe it's Techless. Another way to beat really elite armies and hard counter something like, say, Mega Gargans that keep going around in the world is some kind of when it or even really uh ogre mod tribes suffer from this too with bravery debuffs is if you have some kind of a spell that can this this also kind of goes for horde armies too this is going to be a whole how to do with a few things if you can force battle shock tests on horde armies that's great bravery debuffs work great there how bravery debuffs also work great is if you have some kind of a control ability. Like, let's say, um, in Lumineth Realm Lords, again, um, the Cathalar currently has a spell that, you know, you roll against your bravery to see if your model or unit is allowed to do something in that phase. Like, are they allowed to move? Are they allowed to charge? Are they allowed to shoot? Or are they too scared and stuck in place? Now, you pair that into something like Mega Gargans that generally don't have the best bravery in the world, and ogres are only really brave when they're in combat and eating, because they're happy and they're distracted from all the death around them. If you want to stop these armies, you find a way to debuff their bravery. Even with ogres, just stay out of combat with them. And you either make sure that they're stuck and can't move and act, or they fail battle shocks and run away. If it's a big unit of gluttons and they can't take the battle shock and you've made your opponent spend their command points, it's a viable strategy. You know? Your opponent unleashes hell. And then you go and say, like, hey, you know, I, I'm charging and I'm going to all out attack. You want to all out defense and they all out defense. And then they have that decision on their turn. Do I spend my last command point to try to auto pass the battle shock or do I all out attack and if they try to get greedy and all out attack then they're out of command points and then their gluttons are probably running away if you played your cards right you know then we get into how do you beat like just a pure melee army well there's a couple ways to hard counter this um ooh, I guess more hard counter this a little off, off center there um, you can do this just by playing the game. You don't even need to have a certain build to counter people, you know, because really a, a way to beat a melee army is with shooting. You give the melee army the first turn and you deploy far enough away they can't charge you. They move up and then if you're the shooting army, you shoot them. And then if you get the double turn, you shoot again and you win. That's not really a hard counter. That's more... You, you text so hard into shooting that that's just your general game plan on how to play a game. That's just, just how you should be playing. It might not feel the best from a sportsmanship thing when everyone's, you know, playing mixed arms armies and, you know, there's Jimmy going, yeah, man, I brought my, my KO. But on the same flip side of that, if you were, like, the really oppressive Slanesh back in the day when they dropped in 2nd edition, and you were the speed melee army, how did you beat this? You needed shooting in the ecosystem to try to counter it. You know, hopefully the melee army doesn't have a lot of armor saves if they're fast, or if they're, they have good armor, they're slow. And what do you do with that? You either, you shoot them, or you stop them from getting where they need to go. Because if you're a melee army, you're only as good as when you're on in combat around an important objective. So the strat to counter a full melee build is generally move faster than them and pin them in the deployment zone so they cannot walk on objectives. You take cheap units that you don't care if they live or die, you throw them up the board and make it so that your opponent has to go through waves and waves of stuff they can kill. The trick is, if you have, let's say, I don't know, a bunch of bulgor, right, that you're trying to stop, or iron jaw pigs, right? They brought iron jaw gore grunters everywhere. They've got like 20 some odd pigs. They can't fly. 
You're not too worried about them teleporting. They just got to run up and hit you, right? They can be quick. They can move in the hero phase. That's great. What do you do? If you have, again, cheap units you can throw away, you can stop their hero phase move by forcing them to charge into combat with your stuff. So if you take the first turn, you literally move your army so far up that they'll spend two to three battle rounds before they can touch an objective. You should win. You know, it's going to feel weird when you're tabled, but you're probably going to win. You're going to take some pigs down with you and you make some bacon. Like, you know, life, it, 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 it's what you want to get out of it. You'll still win the game and it'll feel like you hard countered your opponent. Really, it was, it was just, that's how you play to beat them? I don't know. I <laughs> Countering exists. To hard counter somebody, half the time it's just knowing the strategy in the game to how to play against something. Not necessarily that, like, oh, I went in the lab and I, you know, I know that Steve's gonna be there, or Jesse, or Brittany, or whoever's gonna be there with their particular army, and I'm tired of them winning, and I'm gonna go and build something specifically. Because really, to hard counter someone in Age of Sigmar, you need to know exactly what they're bringing. And you're going to take items and artifacts and units that specifically are there to beat up on your opponent. You know, like, if you're playing against Slanesh and you take Deepkin and they have an artifact that does extra damage against Slanesh units. You know, that that's a way to try to hard counter somebody. And in, in gamer parlance, half the time that's cheese. Oh, I hate to say it. You know. How do you beat a shooting army? Because we've talked about how a really strong horde army can go into an el and outdo an elite army and hard counter them because you just can't kill enough of them. The way to counter a horde army is to bring horde clearing tech. You know, with the spells or abilities that do mortal wounds per however many models are in the unit. That's generally a good thing. Another way to beat elite armies if you don't have hordes is to shoot them or use abilities to run into them with mortal wounds. How to beat a melee army if you're shooting is give them the first turn and just deploy so they can't charge you and shoot them and then shoot them again in the double turn is what you're playing for. A way to beat a melee army if you're also a melee army is to pin them in their deployment zone. You know, how do we... How do we go through this against shooting armies or armies that are really good with magic? You know, so I think the easier thing is how do you go against an army that's really good with magic? How do you counter them? How do you play against it more? Uh, generally, again, this is generally here, if your army has this tool in its toolbox. Because that's the other thing, too. Not, all, not every army is made equally in Age of Sigmar. Or any games workshop game. No, there should never be a one for one comparison. Everything should have its own flavor of how it does things, how it gets around, what does what can it do. But generally, if you're trying to beat an army that is known for very good spell casting, looking at the Illumineth Realm Lords, looking at Zinch, you try to bring a sub because this is usually where you find it, is if your army has a sub-faction that's good against magic. Generally, it'll have a rule where you have a spell ignore. They cast a spell, see if it affects your unit. You know, on like a 6-up or corn, a 5-up, you ignore the effects of the spell. You know? There are ways to make it so you get pluses to unbind enemy spell attempts. Whether it's, you know, banishing endless spells before they can hit your stuff. Whether it's unbinding spells as they're being cast. You know, Nighthaunt also has a really cool unit in Miramore and Banshees that basically give you a, a second attempt at trying to unbind a spell at a plus one if you have, I believe it's four or more Miramore and Banshees in the unit. I like bringing a unit of eight just to be a, a spell protection piece. You know, it. that's why I don't know 
what the minimum is off the top of my head because I usually bring more than is required. And then my opponent, after they get wise to my tricks, just knows to kill them. So, um, you know, if you're in order, you could, and you have the ability to ally in Cities of Sigmar, the Rune Lord is an amazing piece for this. It is a plus two to unbind and dispel, because it's a dwarf that hates magic. And the cool thing is, because it is not a wizard, you can take the heroic action on it to give it an extra dispelling attempt. A heroic willpower, if I remember right. And so what that ends up doing is you, you got two spells. You're probably going to stop now. Plus whatever your other wizards are that you've brought to try to go back and forth there. There's also artifacts that are generally once per game, like in Caradron Overlord, they have a once per game auto unbind. Where it's, like, if your opponent with this magic, they'll call it a spell dom, with this spell dominance here, you know, in order, they have short range on their spells, let's say, or it's 18 inches, and again, we deployed outside of that. They need to put out a linchpin kind of spell. Like the endless spell portal. You save your auto unbind for that, and then everything that your opponent was trying to do for their offensive magic spells all of a sudden can't reach you, and you bought yourself a turn to move closer to them on your turn. And that's great. Um, some allies, like for Stormcast, they have the Knight and Cantor unit where on the War Scroll card, there's a once per game auto unbind. So, okay, that could be two spells you're auto unbinding, and if you're you know, if you're Brack Thringy, th however you say it, you could just bring the uh, the Rune Lord from Cities, because it's a proper dwarf with the right keywords of Duradin. Duradin, however you want to. I never say that right. That's why I'm not really a dwarf player. But you could just bring him <laughs> and then ally in the Stormcast. And all of a sudden, you know, you take the artifact for the free auto unbind on a navigator, if I remember right. That's two auto unbinds, plus two attempts to unbind stuff at a plus two. That could be four spells you're stopping. And then that gives the rest of your army agency to kill whatever's trying to cast at you. Because generally, generally, spellcasters die pretty easy if they don't get all of their buffs up. You know, if it's techless. One of the main spells that Teclis wants to get off is the protection of Teclis, which is a bubble of a 5-up ward save to ignore damage. If that's gone, you know, they're probably going to spend an Aether Quartz. Lee, I'm thinking Carriage on Overlord. An Aether Quartz for plus 1 to save, an all-out defense. And then, if you also stopped a Mystic Shield earlier, it's kind of all they got. To try to survive through your turn, which, if your character on Overlord, should be shooting the living heck out of the God of Light. Like, a lot of cities casters are on, like, a 5-up or a 6-up save. Um, Zinch. A lot, like, some of the casters are going to be protected from shooting because they're foot heroes and we're in this world of Galatian champions. So that might be a little bit harder. But if you also have magic spells to throw at them, that's not protected from being a Galatian champion. So that might be your way, is you fight magic with magic. You know, if they don't have to worry about positioning to stop you shooting. Even then, you might just shoot the unit that's standing next to the hero and then shoot the hero with the second unit you're going to be shooting with. They can't be everywhere at once to protect themselves and still be on objectives. And, and how does this work as a melee army? If they didn't bring the right spells to horde clear, your hordes are going to be fine. If they, you know, they're focusing more on, like, killing elite stuff, like, you know, if you have an armor save of a 2-up, a 3-up, a 4-up, take D6 mortal wound. That's not going to do anything against a bunch of goblins or scathing clan rats, right? It's not. You know, on the 4-up, you might be catching some, uh, some gore if they took the shields. But that's not going to kill 30 gore. It's going to be like a d6 damage. You're fine. Functionally, you're fine. What really you need to do as that melee army is, again, 
rush them and and surround them so they don't have agency to get on the objectives you know or play for only as many objectives as you need and this can go to more of like how do we play the game because it is hard if you're not bringing this anti-magic tech and you run into it it's like what do i do how do i counter this thing well, we have to remember a lot of the battle plans we play are hold one objective, hold two objectives, and hold more than my opponent plus score my battle tactic. And most of the battle plans have more than three objectives. So sometimes the way to counter something is just not engage with it. Score your points. Stop them from standing on the objective with you and getting into a fight. I don't know, if they brought the wrong spells, you're going to last the whole game and be fine. If they brought horde clearing spells, you need to rush your opponent and make sure that they can't just pick and choose which unit of yours to blow up. You know, and if they're, they're using a monster or a hero riding a monster to be their spellcaster, remember, you can just shoot them. They're not protected because they're not a Galatian champion. Just blow them up. Now. When it comes to how do I counter a shooting army, I, Rocco, having played as the shooting army for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games, and through my Age of Sigmar career, being a part of a big club with the Basement Wargamers for a couple of years, and going through different tournaments, and then, you know, you know me, I... I helped pioneer a lot of the tabletop simulator stuff where I, and during the, the height of the pandemic where no one was working, you know, you can get three games a day pretty easily and just grind that out ridiculously. Not anymore. But, you know, I still get a weekly game in or two. If I'm playing against a shooting army, the rule of thumb that I have, and I say this anytime, is... The defining factor is if my opponent has more shooting than I do, they are the shooting army in the game. It could be corn with skull cannons and I'm bringing iron jaw pigs and a maw crusher. They are the shooting army. Shooting means you can reach out and touch somebody before they can touch you. Some shooting armies have an ability where if they get shot, they could spend something and shoot back. I don't know. That might be more 40k. My mind's getting muddled, but... I might have snuck into some Age of Sigmar with, with game design. The important thing is they need to go first because, and here's why, this sounds crazy, because there are exceptions, but the general rule is they need to go first because if I can survive a single turn of their shooting, that is great, I'll have enough of an army that if I double turn them, we're back on an even footing. It'll be like they got a shooting phase and maybe some of the combat phase. And then I get a turn to bring me either close to even and the numbers lost or I'm like gaining ground. I'm close, right? And then if I get the double turn, that allows me to come even or overtake them. Either on the scoreboard or just models that can score on the field. You know, you need to play for the double turn mechanic. Or at least limit them. Because if they go first, they cannot double turn you until you double turn them. All right, Because if a shooting army gets a double turn and they don't roll bad and you don't roll like a god rolling armor saves, they will cripple your army before you get a chance to go. Because if you go first, you move up to the middle of the board, you're all happy. Sure, you got a mystic shield on somebody, you got an aura for minus one to wound me, you know, whatever, fine. If they get two turns of shooting and some fighting, it ain't happening. It just, you have to, again, you're, at that point, you're planning on the dice being in your favor more than your opponent playing decently and average dice coming into effect. That, that's not a strategy. And if you built your army right and you, you had screens and stuff that, so they can't shoot your heroes and you've got, you know, unit regeneration, everyone's got a four-up rally, it feels like, and you're going into a shooting army of Marathi and the Bow Snakes, right? And she makes them shoot in the hero phase and then the shooting phase. 
and then they get the double turn, then it's the hero phase, and the shooting phase, that's, what, 36, that's 120 shots, that probably ran 1-1 one, one damage, it was, with mortal wounds sprinkled in, because 6 is to hit for them to do mortal wounds, not much in this game was ever built to survive that, plus the melee threat of, of the Shadow Queen, and a unit of Witch Elves fully buffed. Nothing in the game was meant to survive that. It's not. So, you know, hoping that your opponent misplays? No. What you can survive is giving your opponent first turn. They get into shooting range, which could be 18 or 24 or sometimes 30, depending on the army and how crazy things are. They'll shoot you, then you go. If they moved up, to get on objectives, that means they move close enough to you that your melee troop should be able to hit them on your turn. And hopefully you can trade back what they shot. Right? You know, another way to try to avoid all the shooting is, you can pre-measure it in Age of Sigmar, deploy outside of their shooting range. So that when they move up and try to shoot you, they'll still be out of range, and they still have to stand on an, an objective. You have some kind of movement tool. Maybe you are Iron Jaws. Maybe you have a teleport. Maybe you have deep striking. I don't know. These are, again, generic things. Not every army has these toolkits. A lot of them do, though. You know, through death armies, through Beast of Chaos ambushing. You know, we have tools. We have tools now. But how do you really counter a shooting army is... Either, again, A, you do my thing where it's you give them first turn, you weather the storm, and you play up to score objectives and the double turn. And also, I'll add in that if they moved up to get objectives and you can come in and, and clear them off, you then make it so that on their next turn, whenever they get it, they can't actually step on your objectives because they'll shoot your units dead and then not have a valid charge target to get on the objective, or you moved in such a way that they just can't fit on an objective and outnumber you. And that could be a turn or two of them just trying to even the score up on you. And sure, they're killing your stuff, but you're winning on the scoreboard, and that's what matters. The other options are Alpha Strike. I don't say it often. I don't like Alpha Strike. I'm against Alpha Strike in general. But for a lot of shooting armies, if you can be so aggressive onto them and only one unit of theirs can unleash hell, and you just run everything down and and kill enough of their stuff or pin it so that their units that can still shoot have to shoot into suboptimal targets. Like, if I'm bringing unrendable eels in my deepkin list, and my opponent has to shoot the nearest deepkin unit, all right? And I've got a unit of unrendable eels. I don't care if they're Ren 6 with all their buffs. I'm still a 4-up armor save. I'm ethereal, uh, you know, night haunt. And they're stuck into my unit of heritance. And they have to shoot the unit of heritance I don't necessarily care about anymore. They did all their damage. They wiped out half the unit. They're probably not killing my unit. And then I'm going to get a combat phase with them. Or they're going to retreat to try to save the troops. Either way, they're not going forward to the objectives. This is where that becomes a really valid strategy, because a lot of shooting, especially in order, is a 5-up armor save. Sometimes they might have a minus 1 to be hit, they might have some kind of a, a mystic shield, they might be in cover for plus 1 save. But you're trying to chew through, after modifiers, probably a 4-up armor save. That's not bad. Then you get into Caradron Overlords where a lot of the boats are three up armor and they've got little armor guys that are on a four up base save. But they're not the same teleporting armor they used to be. Pinning them in place, they can't move everybody out. They can't teleport everybody out. If they have to shoot at the unit they're stuck with, that means they're not moving and they're not getting the objective. I'm okay with that. And the third option is just to take a shooting army and shoot them before they can shoot you and get into a gunfight on the tabletop. And and with that, just shoot them. 
get into that shooting war on the tabletop. You know, take your bow snakes versus Teclas. See who's got the better castle against Stormcast. See who's better at shooting in the hero phase. You know, my Deepkin Reavers will have a, a bow fight against other Deepkin Reavers. It happens. Is it a hard counter? No. Are armies like my Deepkin really good into shooting? Yes, and that that's the hard counter. I have other rules for that. There's other interactions. Is it prevalent? No. There's not a lot of Deepkin players out there. There's, there, there's not. There should be more. It's a really cool army. Um, and, you know, KO. I've, I've been the bane of KO's existence for the, the last two books. I'll try to make it three for three. But, you know. But back to the topic. I don't think hard countering necessarily is as prevalent as everyone says it is. A lot of the things you say are, oh man, you countered my army, is you know how to play against it. And then it's on your opponent to try to adjust how they're playing and their tactics. And, you know, you keep in mind some rules of thumb, and if you're aware of things being in the meta, you're like, cool, I'm going to run into a bunch of goblins, or people are bringing 95 squig herd or whatever, I'm going to bring horde clearing abilities and spells to try to limit what they can do. And make them battle shock off the table before they do anything. You'll be fine into, ho into Horde. And if you know you're going to go into elite armies, mortal wounds. And if you know you're going into combat armies, pin them in place. It also works for shooting. If you're a melee army. That was a good wrap up. And I'm going to try a new little tagline here in the end of this rant. So thank you for coming to the video. Like and subscribe. If you liked what we're doing here, and as I'm probably going to be saying at the end of all of our videos now, you know, roll some dice and be nice to each other. Thank you for watching. Bye.